Hello and welcome to Menvik Studio. My name is Angli Ivesuko. If you're coming across me for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Do consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. To my returning subscribers, thank you very much for all of your support. So today I'll be sharing six facts about Scotland which I find interesting. So we use pounds in Scotland, but the looks of the money is very different from the ones you would find in England. In fact, on the money it says Bank of Scotland. What most people do not know is that outside of Scotland, people are not obligated to accept the Scottish pounds. So say for example, if you travel to England with Scottish pounds and you went to a shop and purchased something, the shop attendant can refuse your Scottish pounds as a means of payment. The English pounds is accepted all over the UK and all over the world that is the pound that is actually recognized. So if like me you travel from here to your home country, say for example I'm from Nigeria, travel to Nigeria, just save yourself the hassle and do not bother taking along any Scottish pounds with you because it could either be rejected or some people would offer you ridiculous exchange rate for it. The native language here in Scotland is Gaelic. This is however neither spoken nor understood by a lot of people. In fact, most people don't know what that is. There's a lot of effort in schools to get this into the school and get teachers to teach the language. And students are also encouraged to pick this up. So the general language spoken is English. However, there are so many different accents and some are really difficult to understand. In fact, amongst the native Scots, they find it difficult to also understand accents from certain parts of the country. I teach music in schools and when I play examples of some folk songs which are sung in English, pupils tend to ask what language that is. That's how difficult it can be to understand some of the accents. I find that accents from around Edinburgh are clear and very easy to understand. And the accents from around Glasgow, I find them more difficult to comprehend. One of the things I find really interesting about Scottish schools is that students typically don't take exams. I have mentioned this in one some of my previous videos, but yeah, I still find that really interesting. So students don't take formal exams until they are in the senior phase of the secondary school. So the way the school system works is within each class you would find students with varied abilities and pupils typically work on levels. So in a class you would find pupils on different levels depending on their abilities. And the teachers are expected to cater for everyone. So there is this thing called differentiation within the schools whereby teachers uh, create work to accommodate the, abil the different abilities within their class. Another interesting fact which I've also mentioned in my videos is that tuition is free in the university. The most interesting aspect of this is that tuition is free for Scottish students and for EU students. Now this was before Brexit, it's not so much the same now. However, those from the rest of the UK, they are expected to pay their own tuition. For example, if you normally live in England and you decide to go up to Scotland to, um, to study for a university degree, you would be expected to pay, just like any other person who is coming from any other country. So unfortunately for those of us who are from countries outside of the EU, there are typically no direct flights from both Edinburgh and Glasgow international airports. We have to go to London or some other European country to get a connecting flight to our destination. Also at the point when you're coming into Scotland from your travel, say for example if I traveled from Nigeria and I'm coming into Scotland, Typically, you just pass through immigration, but there are no checks per se. And I think this is because, again, there are no direct flights to Scotland. So, because you would already have passed through either London or some other European country. This one typically catches a lot of people out, even for those who live in, for example, England or any other part of the UK. So in Scotland, the Easter Monday is typically a working day. Granted, schools are normally on holiday on that day, but other than that, every other business is open as usual. However, the 2nd of January is typically a public holiday in Scotland and not so much so in the rest of the UK. The 2nd of January falls on a weekend, would get that day off um, during the week before we carry on with the rest of the year. In Scotland, the tax bans are lower, meaning taxpayers end up paying uh, more. So the threshold where you start, where you move up to a different tax band or where you move up to a higher tax band is, is um, lower, So which means you end up paying more tax compared to every other person in the rest of the UK. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video interesting and entertaining. 